the leading scientists of our world are developing a technology that will power the future of mankind. A fusion reactor. But what materials will they use to contain the power of the stars? Let us find out by studying a fusion reactor material under the scanning electron microscope. Hello, my name is Maido. And I'm Hella Mai. In this episode, we will be studying a material which is one of the possible candidates for making some inner components of fusion reactors. The performance of our sample has already been tested by exposing it to high energy plasma, similarly to real conditions. As you saw, the center of the substrate has suffered most of the damage, and that's where we will try to make some high resolution images. We will also use energy dispersive X ray microanalysis to find out what material we are actually dealing with. So, let's get started. This is a metal sample, so it can easily be cleaned from possible dust particles and contamination with high purity deionized water and organic solvents. In this study, we will use silver paste instead of a carbon tape to attach the sample to a mushroom-shaped holder. This allows us to obtain even higher resolution images, as the sample is kept firmly in place. Our current sample is too big to be inserted into the microscope through the airlock, and therefore we will use the main door instead. Now that the level of vacuum is sufficiently high in the chamber, we can start our studies. So, how do we measure the elemental composition of a material? First, we need to find a suitable site to do the analysis. This one looks good, as it appears to be free from contamination, which might affect the measurements. Next, the selected area is bombarded with electrons, exciting the sample atoms. During the relaxation of these excited atoms, characteristic X-rays are emitted, which carry information about the sample atoms. By using energy dispersive X-ray detectors, we can collect the signal and calculate the exact composition of the sample. As you can see, the top layer of the sample consists mainly of tungsten, which makes sense as this material has an incredibly high melting point of 3422 degrees Celsius and a relatively high MOS hardness of 7.5. Ideally, the plasma in the reactor never touches the walls, but the contamination of fuel by fusion reactor products and other impurities over time is unavoidable. Therefore, diverters are used to remove this contamination from the system by absorbing the energy of heavier high-energy ions that are violently ejected from the main plasma. One of the few materials that can withstand these extreme conditions is likely tungsten, and this is what the scientists are testing at the moment. So, let us zoom in and see how well one of the toughest materials in the world performed in these experiments. As can be seen from the scanning electron microscope images, the surface is covered with peculiar topographic features. Let us ask an expert what we are dealing with. This pass is created when tungsten is exposed to high energy plasma, which causes the atoms of the materials to be constantly extracted and redeposited. Such gradual degradation of the fusion reactor's inner walls and other components is actually quite bad, as it pollutes the plasma with heavy particles that absorb more energy. This ultimately causes the plasma to become unstable. In order to overcome this challenge, the scientists have to test and develop different materials to find the most suitable one to be used in the real fusion reactor when the time finally arrives. So that's how we learn more about fusion reactors with the help of a scanning electron microscope. What materials would you use to build a fusion reactor and what should we study next under the scanning electron microscope? Let us know by writing your thoughts to the comment section below. Bye.